All right, so for everyone who just joined, I am Laura Swanson with the University Aviation Association, and we are now moving on to our next presenter. Our next presenter is Lynette Darnell with Piedmont Airlines. Hi, Lynette, how are you doing? Good morning, doing well, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining and we can see you and you are good to go. And remember everybody, if you have any questions or comments for Lynette, you can type them in the Q&A box or in chat, I am watching both of those boxes. Okay, Lynette, it's all yours. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Um, Lynette Darnell with Piedmont Airlines. I am the Senior Manager for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Development. And I've been with the industry over close to seven years already. I previously was in talent acquisition. I worked as a manager for the pilot programs um, so uh, I've been around for quite some time and I've had the privilege to um, work with some of the um, schools here today and some of the professionals on the call today. So I'm excited about this. Like um, Joel, I am not, I don't consider myself an expert, but I will share with you today some basic information about diversity, equity, and inclusion and our journey at Piedmont and what we've done in the last probably two years, close to two years, um, to embrace diversity, equity, and inclusion. First, I wanted to start by saying that diversity, equity, and inclusion is definitely a process as our workforce continues to change and evolve into what it is today and what will be in the future. It will require organizations to it change as well and embrace the new workforce. Obviously, we need to um, understand, you know, why diversity, equity, and inclusion is important. Diversity is, you know, having all the different people with different backgrounds, education, experiences, values, religious belief. Um, being different. Um, inclusion is making sure that obviously we make everyone feel that they can be their best self, that they are valued, that they belong, and they can contribute um, and be heard. And equity, we wanted to make sure that we incorporated, incorporated equity to our strategy um, because we wanted to make sure that we've removed any barriers um, that have been in place and, and we wanted to ensure that everyone gets the same opportunities and are tr treated fairly and everyone has an equal opportunity to be successful at Piedmont. We also have taken an approach of appreciation and curiosity for you know perspectives and, and we believe that there is value in different worldviews and which we all have, right? We have taken this approach, not just for um, everything that we're doing, but you know, we have implemented this perspective and the respect for worldviews in problem solving, in planning for the future, in everything we do that has to do with bringing the entire operation together in order to move forward and be the best organization that we can be. Why do we think this is important? Um, fostering culture of inclus inclusiveness where everyone is heard, included, and feels part of the conversation is not just the right thing to do, but it's also business savvy. And, and we have recognized the value that it has in the organization. In addition to that, more than ever, younger generations are looking at these practices. And in many situations, they're making the decision to whether or not they're going to work for you based on these practices and, and what they see, because they want to work at a place where they know they're going to feel welcome and they're going to be embraced. Um, inclusive practices have an impact on business actions, culture, and ultimately on the bottom line. Some of my colleagues in, um, in HR have used the analogy recently, and I thought I would share it with you, um, about technology and business. 
think about this. What would a customer or a potential employee say if they walked into your office and you were still using a flip phone? Obviously, businesses, we adapt to new technology, we look for new trends, and organizations are constantly adapting to new demands, right? What happens when organizations refuse to adapt to new demands? They go stagnant. Most likely, uh, there's a, a higher chance that um, it won't turn out that great, right? So the same thing with equity, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we must trust and uh, we must embrace and adapt as things continue to evolve and the demand continues to shift. And that is that's that's what's happening out there. Um, and we must embrace what's happening and we must decide, do we want to move forward and embrace this new technology and move into the future? Or do we want to stay stagnant and, and just you know do the same thing over and over and expect different results, right? And remember, this is a process and it will take time. At Piedmont, our goal is to promote diversity, create an inclusive work environment where everyone can grow strive and be their best self. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is part of who we are as an organization, but most importantly, it is an essential part of the organization that we want to be in the future. And our mission is to secure our future with a culture of caring, compliance, and communication. And our vision is to be the best American Airlines regional partner. And I, I show this to you because this was a critical part of getting our strategy and embracing diversity and inclusion as an organization. We needed to know who we were and where we were going before we took any step forward. Um, as we continue to embrace diversity and inclusion, obviously we started by building the foundation of what was diversity and inclusion going to be like or what that was going to mean to us. Um, we definitely started by working really hard on leadership buy-in and Joel mentioned something in his presentation and that was, you know, the approach that you use to get leadership buy-in. That was critical for us, right? The way we presented the business case that we use to prove that this was something that we wanted to take forward and that was gonna impact and benefit the organization. Then we made sure that we have the proper staff. We developed the strategy, we identified our metrics, we set benchmarks, we created the council, which um, we have members from the entire organization. That way we can have a broad perspective and, and we have all the views that we need in order to make it work, right? And we consider not just the flight operations, but also our uh, team on ground handling operation. And of course, we worked on communication, which is a critical part of moving everything forward, believe it or not. Um, the way you put information out there in um, your uh, ed the education part, it's, um, it's a huge deal. We needed to look at our audience, our, our workforce, how we were gonna get the information out there, what tools we were gonna use, the resources that we had in place. And of course, we wanted to be in compliance and make sure that we did things right. Um, the next step um, we took was the development of the employee resource groups as part of our um, overall uh, plan. And these groups, and I will go into more details about these groups further in my presentation, but <clears throat> some of the steps or critical areas of developing these groups were the leaders, right? Preparing them in, in keeping them motivated. These groups are actually led by employees. Um, they do this because they wanna do it. They're passionate about it. So you have to definitely work and make sure that they stay motivated and that these leaders are the right people for um, 
creating these groups. Um, our executive sponsors, we um, you know, added them to the mix and, and they are the ones that ensure that our ERGs are on track and um, everything they do is in line with organization or goals. And of course, we develop bylaws and um, manuals and things that allow us to create a structure for these groups to be successful. And of course, and then we focus on membership and um, increasing our membership. Uh, this is basically our timeline. Um, we kind of took off running with everything back in 2019. We develop our strategy, we develop our metrics, identify our needs. We wanted to make sure that if we had any hot spots or any areas that needed immediate attention, we wanted to identify those and we immediately determined the direction and where we wanted to go. 2020 came, we launched the ERGs and COVID happened. So <laughs> we kind of had a, um, a period where we didn't know what was going to happen or, you know, what that was going to look like. So we definitely took some time to kind of navigate through that process. We adapted our approach. We updated our strategy um, and it worked. It, it, you know, one of the things that, um, was amazing was obviously we moved into a full virtual platform after COVID and our employees were craving that communication outlet. They wanted to engage more than ever because the environment was so uncertain and they just embraced the ERG. So that was a really positive experience that we had. Um, obviously, during 2020, we evaluated our partnerships and we looked for new ways to foster our relationships. Obviously, we went from having a tremendous amount of money, our budget was <laughs> crazy, and to having nothing to offer these organizations anymore. So we wanted to definitely work on building those relationships and communicating with our partners that we still wanted to be part of and collaborate with, but then now we didn't have any, a lot of um, the things that we would be able to offer. So we took some time to do that. We saw a need at the organization for um, pronoun use and we launched that training um, company-wide and it was um, very successful as well. And we continue to develop our ERGs. Now, we, in 2020, we are continuing to move forward. And um, our focus is um, leadership involvement. We want to make sure that our leaders are taking action and are representing what we are preaching, right? That they are taking action and we want them to get involved, participate of the event attend the meetings and really embrace the culture that we're trying to develop. Um, we are also focusing on inclusive actions as an organization. Um, we, are, we have created manuals and um, resources for um, supervisors and managers to navigate through employee transitions. We are looking at publications um, and, and looking at ways to um, change our language to a more inclusive language. Um, at the end of May, we should have four of our leaders, including myself, um, certified in diversity, equity, and inclusion. By the end of the year, we should have 60% of our HR staff trained in Safe Zone. And we are looking for ways to definitely um, prepare our HR staff better, better than ever and make sure that um, when they're recruiting, they're using the best practices and they are doing um, the, th the right things they need to do in order to um, attract um, the best talent. Um, and the list goes on. Um, we definitely want to continue to focus on our ERGs, which have been a critical 
tool for us. Um, the ERGs have opened the opportunity for employees to definitely um, have a safe space to have the difficult conversations to bring those concerns to us. In addition to that, it has been a great source for training internal talent, which for us is amazing and um, a really valuable tool. We want to continue to work on communication strategy. One of the things that we have noticed is, you know, there are, we have a very diverse workforce, um, not just, you know, we don't, Hemon has 10,000 employees and we are located all over the US. And um, so we're looking for ways to remove the barriers, um, communication barriers. So everyone gets the message. Everyone gets an opportunity to embrace, engage, and um, participate in everything that we're doing. And of course, we are continuing to work on our metrics. And just to give you a quick overview of some of the metrics that we are um, looking at short term, ERG membership events um, for each pillar, representation and hiring goals, employee engagement surveys, retention, and changing leadership behavior towards diversity, employee tenure, demographics, representation in leadership positions, and better performance. Um, so I'm going to brief, uh, briefly ex uh, talk a little bit about these employee resource groups. Um, this is our structure at um, Piedmont right now. So I oversee the Diversity Council and um, each ERG um, has a leader and an executive sponsor. Um, it's a director or above at the company that is guiding them and mentoring these leaders um, as they lead the, um, the groups. And then we have um, the ERG members, which are located all over the US. Now, when we decided that we were going to launch these groups, we had to create a business case and also um, kind of a base for, you know, what they were going to be like and what was going to drive them. So we selected four pillars for our ERG groups, and that is community outreach, employee engagement, development, and recruiting. And we knew, and data has confirmed and proved um, over and over again that, you know, guiding these groups and, and using these pillars as a guide will impact our productivity, retention, performance, and engagement, which ultimately will have an impact on marketing, recruiting, and training costs. Um, and at the end of the day, that was definitely going to impact our bottom line. Also, it was going to make it's going to make our culture better and ultimately giving us a competitive advantage in the marketplace, which aligns with our vision of being the best regional partner American Airlines has. Through these groups, we have provided employees a safe space where they can share concerns, network, grow, collaborate, learn, and give back to the communities that we serve. To me, it is fascinating and amazing getting on a call and having an employee from Bakersfield, California, exchange best practices with an employee from Knoxville, Kentucky. It's, it's amazing the collaboration and, and, and how um, useful these groups have been to us. This is our map right now, um, all the locations where we have members. We currently have six groups, a uh, professional woman in aviation, military veterans group. We have the Latin Diversity Network, Black Professionals, Pride and Christian Employee Network, and hopefully many more to come. We have seen a steady growth in membership um, since we officially took off quarter two of 2020. So we are really excited. Um, as of quarter one of 2021, we exceeded our goal of members for quarter one. So we're really excited about where these groups may go and um, 
the things that we will be able to accomplish using these groups. Um, we have implemented many ways where members can um, interact and engage. Uh, obviously, because we are using a mainly a virtual platform, um, we have monthly meetings. We also have the website where they can constantly go for information and interact, um, get their calendars and, and access to presentations and previous materials from other meetings. They have uh, resources that they can use if they wanted to talk about the topic. We've created um, materials that they can use. Um, we have the Facebook groups, which allows these members to interact on a daily basis. Um, we have emails that go out um, uh, constantly, and we also have an inclusive Monday communication that goes out to all members. These are some um, shots of our website and some of the, the resources that we have online. Um, just a brief overview of 2020. Even though the pandemic was happening and the groups were just taking off, we accomplished, accomplished amazing things. We had 21 events that represented our pillars. We sent cards to over 25 nursing homes, which they were over 3,000 residents. We donated to the local shelters. We highlighted veterans um, at the organization, which ended up being 80, we anticipate that doubling this year or triple probably. Um, we donated school supplies to Salvation Army in Philadelphia, Charlotte, Middletown, Salisbury. And we definitely took a lot of time to create our website and resources that we have today. Um, we had our first ever Hispanic Heritage Month celebration where we brought leaders from American Airlines located in Peru, Mexico, and Argentina. So even though we were in the middle of a crisis and a pandemic, and we, we were really uncertain about everything that was about to happen or the future, we did have a lot of success through these groups and employees engage more than ever. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, obviously, it benefits everyone, and it gives the organizations a competitive advantage by creating a better culture and workplace, but we have to be intentional. We have to take an active approach at having the difficult conversations and really being intentional about um, using different approach to Prove and constantly educate people on the benefits that diversity, equity, and inclusion has. And we have to help each other and get help when we need it. I don't know at all. We are learning in, the, in this process and we, we have so much to go. We have so much to do, um, but we need to collaborate and we need to come together in order to um, be successful. Um, be patient and remember this is a marathon, not a sprint. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynette. We do have a few questions for you. Okay, Guy would like to know, he says, hi, Lynette. It's been a long time since we met in Puerto Rico. <laughs> Can you tell us about the DEI definitions, one of your first slides? Are those Piedmont definitions? Did Piedmont embrace those definitions to fashion your DEI policy? So the, the three definitions, yes, that's how we define the three terms. And we have taken those definitions into consideration in um, what we do. Okay, now Martin has a question for you. Airlines like universities have been hit hard by the pandemic. What tools and resources have you been using to promote DEI in this time of a smaller budgets? Yes. <laughs> so the ERGs have been a critical part of promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion because it has allowed us, allowed us, allow us to um, 
reach everyone at the organization, regardless of where they're located. Um, and believe it or not, the collaboration with different organizations and different professionals um, has allowed us to really uh, have resources that we didn't expect to have. We've had guest speakers, we've had um, other available resources that we've been able to provide to our employees because of those relationships that we nurture and um, we've had for a very long time. In addition to that, you know, we are owned by American Airlines, so they provide a lot of resources as well to us that um, we don't have to purchase or pay for. So that's a great, um, a great thing. But I would say during this pandemic, one of the biggest assets and one of the most um, incredible tools that we've been able to use to get that information and be able to educate people on the subject and promote diversity, equity, and inclusion and promote the initiatives that we are actively pursuing have been these groups. Um, they are a great platform and um, have made a difference. Okay, Lynette, we have one more question. And this is from George. Following up to Guy, earlier you defined equality as a way of breaking barriers to provide the same opportunities for everyone. However, we know that equality is not the same as equal. How can we better explain the importance of equity to underrepresented minorities so that more companies adopt a similar approach, such as the one Piedmont and United are promoting? How can we justify the advantage of equity to business administrators and educational leaders to move forward. We need to look for ways to be able to provide everyone, regardless of who they are, the same opportunities. And sometimes we forget that not everybody has the same access to those opportunities. So we at Piedmont, for example, we're looking to creating those platforms and those opportunities that allow those individuals that haven't had the opportunity to access those opportunities or resources prior to have those opportunities now. So that would be one action um, that I can use as an example. Um, um, we're looking for creative ways to you know, provide different opportunities when it comes to um, training and, and just participating in different um, mentoring programs and training opportunities that allow these individuals that haven't had um, these opportunities to take part and, and, and be able to successfully embrace um, the new, the new opportunities out there. Thank you so much, Lynette. We really appreciate you coming on and presenting for Piedmont. We appreciate it so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you.